welcome again in my course power electronics applications in power systems uh, today i am going to start a new module uh, so far our discussion uh, was limited to the sun type of uh, sun type of uh, compensator and uh, that is basically static var compensator now in this particular module i am going to discuss uh, a kind of series compensator okay uh, in in my di earlier discussion i already uh, explained the difference uh, between the shunt and the series compensators right and uh, uh, this this particular module gives you an idea how uh, this series compensator is different to the shunt compensator and uh, what is the be basic operating principle of the uh, series compensator and how can we control this what are the applications of the series compensators and so on but remember uh, this series compensators are not of a single uh, device there are uh, different kinds of series compensators today i am going to discuss uh, a specific type of series compensator which is named as thyristor controlled series capacitor so let us move so today i am going to discuss thyristor controlled series capacitor and it is well known with its acronym tcsc tcsc thyristor controlled series capacitor okay now looking at this particular terminology thyristor controlled series capacitor you may be surprised because already i discussed that capacitor cannot be controlled with semiconductor switches or there is no concept of uh, control capacitor okay so that's why uh, when i discuss thyristor control uh, capacitor i i explain why that uh, philosophy does not exist rather we have the uh, thyristor switch capacitor okay so if it is so one may be surprised with the terminology that why it is thyristor control series capacitor how a series capacitor can be controlled with the thyristor okay but uh, this i am going to discuss today and we will uh, see here basically although the name is thyristor control series capacitor but it is uh, the thyristor is not controlling the capacitive reactance rather thyristor is controlling something else by which the overall impedance is controlled okay so this is i am going to discuss right now okay so basically there are two types of thyristor or gto you know gto is a kind of switch like thyristor its full form is gate turn up so this uh, is used instead of thyristor in some of the types of series compensator we will come to that so there are two types of thyristor or gto based series compensator number one is discrete type of compensator discrete control device and uh, this is you know the example is the example is tssc which is thyristor switched series capacitor or gssc gto switched series capacitor okay all right 
Now, there is another type of device which is called continuous control device. And the examples are TCSC, which is already I mentioned that it is thyristor control series capacitor or GCSC, that is thyristor or this is GTO controlled series capacitor. Okay. So, in discrete control you know I hope that you understand uh, at this point the difference between the control capacitor and switched capacitor. So, control capacitor means the switch would be used in on condition, off condition and also partially on condition. So, that means the switch whatever it would be used can be used for partial conduction mode okay? and uh, thereby it will control the entity which is connected with the switch okay? or impedance which is connected with the switch right? and uh, this in case of switched capacitor. So, this is a kind of switched capacitor we do not have any partial conduction mode of the switches. So, this is switched capacitor. So, in switched capacitor we do not have partial conduction mode whereas, in control capacitor we have partial conduction mode. So, here either switching operations would be done either fully on or fully off okay. and here switch will be switching operation will be three different types one is fully on another is partially on another is fully off this is i believe that you understand with this terminology okay so this is something you already aware of that uh, a switch device means it is just capable of turning on and turning off Okay. And a control device means it the switches would be used in fully turn on, in fully turn off as well as partially turn on. Okay. So, that is already discussed several times when I discuss static VAR compensator. Now, let us draw some basic schematics. Of this different types of series compensator. Okay. So, schematic wise this TSSC it is something like this we have a capacitor we have a bidirectional switch. Okay. So, the symbol I have drawn is the uh, specific type of switch that is thyristor you know. Uh, so, this is capacitor, this is bidirectional switch and this scheme is uh, TSSC that is thyristor switched capacitor. Here you can see if both the switch are on then it will create a short circuit path and it will bring out the uh, capacitor from the system. Okay. And when they are fully off the capacitor will be in the system and it will act as a fixed capacitor. So, both the switches are turned off it will act as a fixed capacitor when both the switches are turned on this it will act as a bypass capacitor okay. or it will act as a short circuit. Okay. So, this is the mode of TSSC and in TCSC, in TCSC we also have a fixed capacitor and we have a bidirectional switch 
like this along with a inductor ok. So, this is the schematic of TCSC ok. In GCSC just uh, the switch uh, would be different that is uh, GTO, but the overall configuration would be same. Now, what is interesting to see here is that this bidirectional switch is connected to the uh, capacitor in parallel along with a inductor ok. And here this is something like we have a fixed capacitor, we have a fixed capacitor and we have a variable reactor, variable reactor and both are connected in parallel ok. So, this schematic is something like this, we have a fixed capacitor and we have a variable reactor ok. Now, the reactance of this reactor is controlled by the switches over here. So, therefore, this is the overall basic schematic diagram of TCSC. So, we have a fixed capacitor, we have a variable reactor, this reactance we can consider it is as a XTCR ok. And you know that by uh, suitably choosing this firing angle of the switches, we can control the reactance which is in parallel with the capacitor. So, therefore, here this controlled uh, series capacitor is actually a control reactor with this fixed capacitor. So, that means, this scheme is nothing but fixed capacitor plus controlled or controllable reactor in parallel ok. And here as uh, this name is uh, control series capacitor which is somewhat misleading I believe uh, rather uh, this overall impedance of the device is controllable with the control of the this inductance or reactance of the uh, variable reactor which is connected in parallel with the fixed capacitor. So, here capacitor would be would act as a fixed capacitor, but in parallel to that we have a variable reactor which in turns control the overall impedance of the device and that is why it is called control series capacitor. Basically, that uh, the switches are not responsible to control the capacitive reactance, rather the switches are meant for this control to, uh, switches are meant for controlling the overall impedance of the device, how it is possible by controlling the uh, reactance of the reactor which is connected with the fixed capacitor in parallel ok. So, that is what the whole philosophy is ok. So, here we have a fixed capacitor along with a controllable reactor in parallel and this makes the scheme TCSC. Now, as uh, I said the TSSC scheme we will not discuss over here you can uh, understand uh, it is similar to this switched capacitor sometimes it will be turned on. When it is uh, turned on then uh, it is acting as a bypass mode and sometimes it will be turned off then it will be a fixed capacitor. So, nothing to discuss over here as such the switching action is very simple, but here we will discuss this TCSC scheme in more detail. So, let me show you the practical module. module for TCSC with protection circuit. Okay. Now, this practical module of TCSC includes many other as entities, many other uh, different devices. Uh, particularly this for to protect the whole system for different operating conditions of the power system. So, let me draw the basic schematic diagram of this, so that you can understand that what are the components involved in it ok. So, we have the fixed capacitor, this is 
fixed capacitor then we have as I have shown we have a variable reactor okay we have a bidirectional switch I am drawing it TCSC so the switches are of thyristor if uh, it is GCSC the symbol of the switches would be different okay then this is connected in parallel with the fixed capacitor so this is reactor okay and as you know since we have bidirectional switch which will be used to control the reactance of the reactor okay but in addition to that we have many other devices one is ultra high speed switch so we have a ultra high speed contact ultra high speed contact over here here uhsc stands for ultra high speed contact or contactor so this is a kind of switch if you can understand that uh, if you turn on the switch it will bypass the whole this uh, semiconductor switch and this would be required when uh, you you have fully turn on operation of the switches okay so to avoid forward conduction loss this uh, uhsc would be turned on as soon as this full uh, uh, this both the switches are fully turned on just a few time after few microsecond or few millisecond after the both the switches are fully turned on so that you can save the forward conduction loss so this uhsc is to to reduce power loss during full turn on operation of thyristors. Okay. So, we have UHSC, this is additional device which is connected in parallel to the semiconductor switches. Now, apart from that we also have many other device, one is there is a MOV, I am just writing. So, this is basically MOV. Now, what do you mean by MOV? MOV stands for metal oxide oxide varistor. Okay. Now, what it is actually? This is a non-linear resistance. This is a non-linear resistance to limit voltage across the fixed capacitor. So, the philosophy behind this memo V is to protect this fixed capacitor from the sudden rise in voltage or for uh, from sudden over voltage. Okay. So, uh, for uh, this MOV is to protect this fixed capacitor, the basic purpose of this MOV is to protect the fixed capacitor. Now, what else is involved in it? We also have a an inductor here and a circuit breaker. Okay. So, this this is an inductor I, I will come to that what is the purpose of the inductor and this is a circuit breaker. Now, this purpose of the circuit breaker is to bypass the whole unit whole TC unit uh, TCSC unit from the uh, system whenever uh, we require that. Okay. So, the circuit breaker will act as a bypassing switch of the overall unit whenever we require that. Okay. So, we need uh, we have various uh, operating conditions will require that. Okay. So, this LD is a current 
limiting reactor ok this is to limit this is to limit the current in capacitor bypass mode. Now, what do you mean by the capacitor bypass mode? As I said, uh, in fact, in the next lecture, I will discuss uh, different mode of operation of TCSC, but in one of the modes would be capacitor bypass. During that mode, what we will do? We will just simply turn on the circuit breaker and thereby we will bypass the whole uh, TCSC unit and uh, we, we, this is a kind of protection and uh, thereby we will save it from uh, certain operating conditions. Okay. So, this is what the, the task is. So, as you know UHSC is for uh, reducing this power loss or energy loss during full turn on condition. It will be turn on when uh, this uh, semiconductor switches will be fully on to, to save the forward conduction loss. This reactor is used to, to provide a variable reactance in, in parallel to the fixed capacitor. So, that overall impedance of the whole unit would be controlled with the firing angle control and uh, of the switches and by controlling the reactance of the reactor as we know. And this MOV is you know it to for protecting this fixed capacitor to limit the voltage across the capacitor and the circuit, circuit breaker will act as a this uh, bypass mode of operation of the overall device. So, this constitute a overall TCSC unit and this will be connected in series with the transmission line. So, this is transmission line. Okay. So, this is transmission line. Okay. So, since it is a kind of series compensator, it will be connected in series at any point of the transmission line but we also have this bypass mode of operation by using the circuit breaker and we have separated uh, different protection units in this particular system. However, a TCSC unit uh, does not consist of a single TCSC unit rather it consists of a number of TCSC units connected in series. So, actual TCSC unit typical TCSC scheme is something like that. Typical TCSC scheme is something like that. We have a one TCSC unit. I am just representing it uh, with a fixed capacitor and variable reactor. So, suppose this constitutes a TCSC unit C1, this is X TCR1. Okay. And similarly, we have same identical uh, unit multiple such kind of identical unit in series like this. Okay. Okay. So, we can understand that this is C 2 fixed capacitor 2, this is X T C R 2, this is C n X T C R n. Okay. So, we have uh, this is T C S C 1, this is T C S C 2 and similarly we have T C S C n, n number of T C S C uh, unit uh, which will be connected in series to form a single T C S C scheme. Okay. So, this is how uh, this the practical schemes or uh, typical scheme of T C S. And next I will come to that, what is the advantage, what this TCSC does before I discuss the basic operating principle, what a TCSC does. Now, what are the advantages? I will discuss this TCSC application in very detail, whenever I will complete the basic discussion of the operating principle of the TCSC or mathematical modeling of the TCSC, but you should know at this point, what are the typical advantages of TCSC. The advantages are or why should we use TCS in a practical power system. Okay. So, the advantages are it enhance 
enhancement of power flow with reduced rating. Now, one should understand very easily uh, any any student who have done the basic power system course can understand why it will increase the steady state power transmission capacity or power flow uh, uh, through a particular transmission line. Since you know that this power flow through a particular transmission line is inversely proportional to the this reactance of the line. Okay. So, when you connect TCSC in series with the transmission line what it will do? It will reduce the reactance okay? and therefore, when this denominator is getting reduced power flow will definitely get increased. So, basically it is uh, because that power flow is inversely proportional to x, x is the overall reactance of the transmission line and this TCSC can reduce the value of x. So, reducing the x will increase the uh, p. So, this is very simple to understand. Now, second is it can provide damping. of power system oscillation, power system oscillations. How it provides damping? I will go, I am going to discuss at the end and also it, it provides dynamic control control and voltage support. Also, there are some other uh, you know role of the TCSC, which I, I am going to discuss when I will discuss the application of TCSC in power system in very detail. Uh, one of this role is to uh, when we have multiple transmission lines in parallel, a TCSC compensated line can ensure the constant power flow through this line or maybe it is one of the uh, parallel line. Okay. So, it is uh, also I be helpful in power scheduling. So, one of the advantages of it is to power scheduling through transmission lines. Okay. So, these are the typical advantages. There are disadvantages as well I am, I am going to discuss at the end of this. However, right now I am going to discuss the basic operating principle of a TCSC in, in very simplistic manner. Okay. Basic operating principle of TCS. Okay. So, what we will do here is we will consider TCSC just by a fixed capacitor and a variable reactor. So, this is fixed capacitor, this is variable reactor. Okay. So, what would be the reactance offered by the fixed capacitor will be 1 upon j omega c. So, that is basically minus j omega c. Okay. Similarly, what would be the uh, impedance offered by this x t c r? It will be j x t c r. Okay. All right. Now, suppose current flowing through this particular transmission at any instant of time is i okay. and current flowing through this t c r is i t c r. Why I am calling it t c r? Because it is uh, similar to thyristor controlled reactor, it is simply a reactance whose reactance value is controlled with the uh, partial conduction of the switches connected in series with it. Okay. So, this at this point you have to understand that. Now, let us consider the reactance of fixed capacitor capacitor is 1 upon j omega c which is 1 upon j omega c which is this is not true this is represented by j x c. So, this is represented minus j x c. 
all right now the reactants of variable reactor is equal to j x t c r and let us consider the impedance impedance of overall t c s c unit is j t c s ok. Then uh, what we can write that this j t c s c t c s c is equal to this minus j x c in parallel with this j x t c r x t c r which is equal to minus j x c multiplied by j x t c r divided by minus j x c plus j x t c r ok. So, which can be written as if we just uh, divide this uh, numerator and denominator with this j x t c r. So, numerator will have j x c and denominator will have 1 minus x c divided by x t c r ok. So, this is what the net impedance of the T C S. This is what the net impedance impedance of the T C S. Of T C S. Here we know that we have already taken an assumption. What is our assumption that we have taken? Our assumption is the whole unit, the T C S C unit is lossless ok. So, this is uh, even though I do not mention you should understand at this stage that uh, when we say so that this ca fixed capacitor reactance is minus j x c this in uh, variable inductor reactance is j x t c r then already we consider this assumption the T c s c unit is lossless ok. Now, similarly the the current flowing through T C R unit will be equal to I T C R is equal to as you know this I T C R uh, it will be equal to uh, this impedance minus J X C divided by this imp, uh, summation of both the uh, uh, reactants or impedance that is minus j x c plus j x t c r multiplied with i ok, where i is the line current, i is the line current ok. Now, again if we just divide it by minus j x c in numerator and denominator to bring this and also if I take the ratio of i t c r to i then this would be equal to 1 1 minus x t c r divided by x c ok. So, this is what the ratio of the current flowing through this T C R unit. Now, what is T C R? This T C R is basically the variable re reactor. Here, T C R stands for variable or controllable reactor. Okay. All right. Now let's see that uh, uh, when we when we can uh, vary this uh, reactance of the reactor there might be four different cases the case one it may so happen that this x c magnitude is higher than x t c r ok so this is case one in case two 
it may so happen x e magnitude is lower than x t c r ok. This is case 2, this is case 1. In case 3, x c magnitude is equal with x t c r ok. This is case 3 and in case 4, x t c r is considered to be infinite. When it is possible, when uh, they are, uh, when this is uh, x t c r is open circuit that is the third stars are fully turn on ok, fully turn off ok. Now, let us see that uh, what would be the consequence of these cases. Now, according to this first case when x c greater than x t c r. So, that means x c and x t c r this is the ratio. So, if x c greater than x t c r this 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 ratio would be greater than 1. Then 1 minus this uh, something which is greater than 1 will give you the negative quantity. So, therefore, the denominator of this would be negative. So, therefore, here j t c s c will have this minus j x c in the numerator and some negative quantity in the denominator which will give you some positive value ok. Alright, what is the uh, you know consequence of that and what does it imply I am coming to that, but this is what will happen. Similarly, this ratio of this i t c r to i what it will happen since this x c is greater than x t c r. So, you can look at this is what the ratio that is x t c r to x c, but if x c is greater than x t c r. So, this ratio would be lower than 1 that is it will be fractional. So, therefore, uh, 1 minus some fractional quantity would be also fractional. So, this would be also positive ok. So, some positive value. Now, what will happen in case 2? In case 2, you can see this j t c s c would be equal to since x c is lower than x t c r, see x c is lower than x t c r, this would be fractional definitely. So, x c to x t c r ratio would be fractional. So, since x c is lower than x t c r, so this ratio would be fractional. So, 1 minus this would be fractional. So, in the denominator, we will have a uh, fractional quantity, but positive quantity in numerator we have a negative quantity. So, therefore, z t c will have negative value ok. And what about this ratio i t c r to i that is the ratio of the t current flowing through this t c r that is i t c r to the line current or this current flowing through the uh, transmission line. This ratio since x c is lower than x t c r. So, this ratio x t c r to x c will be greater than 1 ok. So, then this denominator would be negative ok. So, numerator is already 1. So, this would be a negative value. Now, what does it mean actually I am coming to that. Now, this is a, a very uh, interesting case case 3 when x c is equal to x t c r. So, this would be equal to 1 this ratio x c to x t c r. So, in the denominator of z t c is z t c s c it will be 1 minus 1 which is 0. So, therefore, this z t c s c will be close to infinity ok. It will be close to infinity. So, this is a special case and this is a special condition that we should not want to see because when z t c s c is infinite that means since this t c s c is connected in series of the transmission line. So, in the wherever it is connected at the transmission line it is offering a infinite impedance. So, it is creating a open circuit it makes the uh, line uh, open which is a situation which is not wanted. So, this is a situation this is a case this is a case which should not or which should be prevented, which should be prevented. So, this is one of the control uh, constraint 
uh, design constant is such that this case will never attain. Okay. So, that is something that is simple interesting. Now, what about this particular case when x t c r uh, provides infinite impedance as if there is open circuit there. So, this is a case when uh, it is the operation of fixed capacitor fixed capacitor mode of operation of TCS. So, in case 4 if it attains that means, if this is x t c r uh, uh, this variable reactance is infinite means switches are turned off. That means, this will happen when both switches are fully turned off. So, therefore, this is a very special situation which may be considered this is not a uh, situation which should be prevented, but it is a condition when uh, this this there is no role of this TCR, there is no role of the variable reactor, rather this will be uh, turned off and this whole unit will act as a fixed capacitor. Okay. Now, coming back to this, uh, this case 1. So, Z TCSC is positive. So, when Z TCSC is positive, when we have both uh, reactants one is negative another is positive that is uh, a kind of inductive mode of operation. So, this is a kind of inductive mode of operation. Okay. Similarly, overall uh, you know impedance when it becomes negative then it is a kind of capacitive mode of operation. So, this TCSC can be operated either in inductive mode that means, it is as if operating as an inductor in series and it is it can be also be operated in capacitive mode as if we are there is a overall capacitor connected in series. Okay. So, both the mode of operations uh, are possible with the uh, TS, TCSC. Right. So, when TCSC will attend this particular case that means, we have a simple inductor connected in series and when we have a this capacitor mode of operation as if we have a some capacitor connected in series with the line. Okay. So, this is what the difference of that. Okay. However, there is another difference as well. If you look at this I T C R and I are positive value, uh, it means it will be something like this we have a capacitor, we have a variable reactor. Now, when this is positive, it means suppose the direction of the line current is this, this is what the direction of line current I. So, this uh, current flowing through this variable reactor, which will be also in same direction that will be I T C R as the line current. Okay. So, the direction of the current flow would be similar to the line current. Whereas, when we have this uh, I T C R to I ratio negative, it means that suppose this is your fixed capacitor, this is our variable reactor, this is fixed capacitor, this is variable uh, reactor, okay. this is fixed capacitor, this is variable reactor. So, when current flowing through this is in this direction, when uh, the whole unit will operate as a capacitive mode, the current flowing through the T C R would be just opposite to the line current. So, this will be I T C R. Okay. So, this is something is the difference between these two modes and normally uh, in, in T C S C operation, this mode is prohibited. this mode is also not likely to happen because in that case there is no control operation, but this may happen this is a valid mode of operation. However, 
uh, mostly this TCSC operate under these two schemes one is inductive mode of operation another is capacitive mode of operation and these two are uh, two different mode of operations possible. Now, one more thing I, I am going to discuss regarding this different mode of operation. Now, suppose we take uh, two cases uh, or two, we take two, two points. One is uh, let us consider that x TCR is equal to 1.5 times of x C that is reactance of the capacitor. Okay. So, this is one case. Another case is suppose x T C R is equal to 0 0.75 of the x C. Okay. Now, what would be the uh, z T C S C here? So, z T C S C you know that impedance of this uh, whole uh, T C S C unit it will be equal to minus j x c divided by 1 minus if we go back and see this is equal to this ratio of x c 2 x t c r. So, this is x c 2 x t c r and this ratio of i t c r to i. Now, what does it mean? This is the ratio of the current flowing through the t c r to the line current it is equal to 1 upon 1 minus x t c r to x. Okay. Am I correct? Yeah. So, this is 1 upon 1 minus the ratio of x t c r to x c. Okay. So, if I now put this values, so this will be equal to minus j x c. Numerator will be as it is. Denominator will be different. So, 1 minus x c 2 x t c r uh, so, this is basically 1 minus 1 divided by 1.5. Now, if you do this, this will be coming out to be minus j 3 x c. Okay. And if you put over here, so this will be 1 upon 1 minus x t c r to x c that is 1.5. So, that is equal to 1 minus 1.5 is 0.5. So, this is equal to minus 2. Okay. Now, what is the mode of operation it is uh, without having seen anything since uh, overall impedance is negative. So, this is a kind of capacitive mode of operation. Okay. Here uh, you know the ratio of this current is minus 2 and this is uh, j 3. Okay. Now, similar to this let us consider this case. So, in that case j t c s c will be equal to minus j x c divided by 1 minus the ratio of x c to x t c r which can be written as minus j x c divided by 1 minus so, x c to x t c r ratio is 1 upon 0 0.75. So, 1 upon 0 0.75. If you do this calculation, this will be equal to plus j 3 x c. Okay. And this ratio i t c r to i is equal to 1 minus 1 upon 1 minus x t c r to x c. So, which is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus x t c r to x c is equal to 0 0.75. So, this is equal to uh, this is 1 minus 0 0.75 is 0 0.25. So, this is equal to plus 4. Okay. And looking at this you can understand that since overall impedance is positive. So, this is an inductive mode of operation. So, as if the whole unit will act as a series inductor. So, here whole unit as a series capacitor. Okay. So, it is acting as a TCSC is acting as acting as series capacitor. Here TCSC 
is acting as series inductor. Now, if you look at this, this ZTC AC values, one is minus J3 XC, another is plus J3 XC. Ideally, both offer the same impedance. So, in both the cases, impedances of DC AC are same. Okay. So, that is uh, you can see over here one is minus j 3 x another is plus j 3 x. However, however, the T C R current current if you look at this ratio one is this which is minus 2 another is this which is plus 4 that means T C R current is twice in inductive mode of operation as that of the capacitive mode. Okay. Now, why it is uh, so important to have this case study? Uh, you can see that although uh, in both the cases, the impedance offered by the TCSCs are same, but the current flowing through the TCR is double when we have the inductive mode of operation. This is very useful in the choice of the rating requirement of the switches. So, this is an important consideration. consideration in choice of the ratings of thyristors. So, the whole uh, philosophy behind this uh, analysis of the case study is that when the choice of the rating requirement of the thyristors would be done, this consideration is to be considered that if it is operated in inductive mode, the current flowing through the inductor would be twice as that of the capacitor uh, mode of operation having the same impedance. Okay? That, that is something very important to understand. Okay? So, with this I will uh, finish this per, uh, first lecture of TCSC and we will continue this lecture in, uh, uh, in my future uh, lectures as well to discuss uh, this TCSC in more detail. So, till then thank you very much for attending this particular lecture. I look forward to uh, see you in the next lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.